So I've been working in the garden, both in an American sense and in a British sense. Uh, I felt like I didn't uh, give the um, the two-footer, um, the 40-meter end-fed low antenna a chance. Two feet high is ridiculous. I want to see in a realistic sense what what would what you can do with a really low wire on 40 meters should you just have to throw it up and over something so and i i feel like i haven't to uh really given it a chance i had it sloping from my window up and out at one point but this now that that fishing pole is uh six feet high and so the wire is at that height this is a bamboo, couple bamboo sticks taped together. Boy, this phone's shaking. Um, sorry about that. Um, so that's about six and a half feet high. And then the window just around the corner there is six feet high. So that's it. I'm going to see if I can uh, work some Envis using QRP, QRO, whatever. I want to see... Uh, I want to see what that wire can do, man. Six feet high? I think that's a very realistic representation of what you might have to work with in an emergency situation. Hang on. Okay, so when I first checked <clears throat> the resonant frequency it was at about 6.8 megahertz. So I went back and folded about a foot. <clears throat> Boy, I can't talk. I folded about a foot back and it raised it up uh, 100 kilohertz. I went out and folded a little more back. Okay, come on, analyzer, please. I can't see what I'm doing here. Uh, so I folded another, oh, almost another foot back on itself. I don't know what the final length is in the mid 50s, 55, 57, 8 feet, who knows. After I'm done testing it, I'm going to measure it accurately. But I want to see what this thing can do, man. Um, perfect match. Um, <laughs> at 2 kilohertz away from the QRP watering hole, huh? Yeah, I'll take it. It's obviously going to be fine at the bottom of the band. You know? I also want to try doing some phone contact, making a couple phone contacts also. So I'm okay with a standing wave ratio of two to one, whatever. Um, two and a half to one at the band edge. I don't care because uh, I'm not worried about feed line loss. My feed line's a foot and a half long, if that. And as long as my transmitter isn't folding back power, I'm happy. And it won't be using 5 watts. <laughs> we'll see what I can do with that. 73. And I forgot to mention, uh, so that I can demonstrate the... Uh, <laughs> this is going to be embarrassing. The shocking directivity of my one element array. <laughs> A one element phased array of nothing. <laughs> That's due west, and that is due north, so it's on about a 45, it's splitting the difference, man. It's heads from the window, due northwest. I wanted to point something out real quick on my multi-tap button. So, right now, my wire's connected to the 81 to 1 tap. Um, with my multi-tap buttons. I kind of use it as a tuning device um, as well as an impedance transformation device. Well, it's one and the same, I suppose. But what you have here is a, uh, a distributed amount of inductance in series with the antenna wire. So you have a distributed amount of inductance a varying selectable amount of inductance in series with the antenna wire and you have a certain amount of inductance in parallel with the antenna wire from the antenna wire to ground 
and you have a certain amount of capacitance from the antenna to ground, both fixed and, well, I suppose this would be fixed as well to a greater degree because it's the capacitive coupling between the primary and the secondary winding. Uh, so it's all a variable affair. And to some extent, I tune my antenna length. I think I'm basically tuning it to use the 81 to 1 tap, perhaps. I don't know. I'll, I could compare. I could, I, I'd have to look at how it behaves with, the, uh, with an electrical half-wave wire connected to it and see exactly which tap would be the most appropriate you would probably have to use a tuner, but uh, like most people do with their end feds. But um, irregardless, I'm using the 81 to 1 tap with my Anun. One moment. And using that 81 to 1 tap, I'm able to achieve this for a resonant frequency, you know, 51 ohms, reactance, 1 ohm. Resonant frequency, right now, 70, 42. So, let's look and see what would happen if we were forced to use a 49 to 1 fixed on it. On a, And now it's connected to the 49 to 1 tap. This is 81, 64, 49 to 1. Hang on. Okay, and you'll see that the resonant frequency has dropped to 69.55, which is no surprise. The standing wave ratio though, 1.5 to 1. R of 55, reactance of 23. Well, what you would do, obviously, is uh, shorten the antenna a little bit and bring the resonant frequency up into range. But let's say you didn't, or even if you did. Well, let's say you didn't. Most people would look at that and say, oh, 1.6 to 1, that's usable without a tuner, which is true. Most people with an NFED would, a commercial NFED, they'd look at the top end of the band and they'd be like, dang, man. This antenna is amazing. 3 to 1 SWR, I could almost get away with running it without a tuner, which is true. They'd be like, they, their attitude is, yeah, it's excellent. It, it covers the whole band. And all they got to do is hit the tune button on their radio. And that's true. And it'll work excellent. But me, I'd rather have a choice and Z, Z transformation capability. I'd rather have an SWR of one to one with an R of 51 and an X of zero <laughs> at my QRP watering hole. Just saying. <laughs> God, I sound like an a-hole. 73.